Hello friends! Yes, I'm wearing thin hair. I'm filming several videos in a day. What of it? I'm being organised. So, many of you know that I watch a lot of cartoons. I like a lot of cartoons and I think that it's good for adults to also watch cartoons. And there is a cartoon that came out a couple of years ago that just released, I want to say season three, called Big Mouth. It is one of the best examples of positive sex education I have seen probably ever actually. The area that I grew up when I went to school, our sex education consisted of one class every week and it was all about like how to put condoms on a banana and STDs and how you'll die from them and that was pretty much the extent of it and one time there was a split assembly the girls went into one assembly the boys went into another assembly and got told completely different information when we put the pieces together we realized that the boys had been taught about like orgasms male orgasms and you know it, the miracle of ejaculation and not to get a girl pregnant and that seemed to be pretty much it and the girls were taught about periods and various types of cancer, STDs again, and how bad it is to get pregnant. So it's not very positive, it's not massively informative, and you know, the boys and the girls are totally segregated when it comes to the information. We get different kinds of information, and we're fed a different kind of approach to sex health. So for me, when I watched season one of Big Mouth, I was shocked initially because these the kids depicted in it are sort of 12, 13, 14. And they're at that curious age where they don't really know what things are, but they really want to know and all the hormones are starting to bubble up and everything. It's probably the key time to deliver this kind of information if you haven't already done it. But the thing is, the thing that makes me sad is there's a lot of people I've seen commenting that it it feeds the wrong information and that it's inappropriate and yada yada yada. The comments that say that it's inappropriate I'm sure are from relatively conservative people who are uncomfortable with educating their children about sex and things, which I understand but I don't think that it's good for young people to have that information withheld. Season three came out, like I say, just a couple of days ago, and a lot of people are mad about this one scene where the, a new girl joins the school and presents herself as Pan. I am pansexual. Holy oh, shit. A number of people were upset because they think that the episode defined Pan wrong, but her definition of Pan is the dictionary definition of Pan. and what's going on is there's a main character who has been struggling since season one with his sexual identity and it seems pretty clearly obvious to everyone else I think that he's bisexual. He is equally into boys and girls. Jay, look at you. You're literally in a closet. What the hell are you doing? I, I, I don't know. Everybody wants me. I'm very confused. Better than Brad, right? Well, well it's different. I, I kind of like it with both of you. And when this girl comes into the class and everyone's really excited about her interest in everybody, he starts to feel more comfortable with the idea that they might be okay with him. Spoiler alert, if you want to see the episode, watch no further. But that's not what happens when he comes out as bi. People don't treat him well for it, they kind of assume that he must be into everybody and he really doesn't understand why she's been treated so well and he's been treated so terribly. And he talks to her like she's had an easy time. And she explains that she was actually, she had to leave her previous school because of how badly she was treated for coming out as Pan. So when you watch this whole episode, the key things that it points out are that coming out is not easy. It might go well in one area and not go well in another area. It also points out that being bisexual or pansexual is treated differently depending on if you're a boy or a girl. You can, as a straight man, you can sexualize a woman who's also into women. But as a straight man, you can't sexualize a man who might also be into men and women. So 
Jay, the character who's bisexual, he has a bad time because they, they can't, you know, fantasize him. They can't make his coming out a sexy thing. But because the girl is like a, a pretty girl and a girl, it's easy to sexualize her. And, and this is a, a truth that I have experienced firsthand. I don't know that I've ever made a video about it. I don't feel the need to declare my sexuality or what I'm into. I know that everybody's doing that, but I just, I'm, if somebody asks me, I'll tell them, but otherwise I'm comfortable not making a huge announcement of it. But for the purpose of this video, I am bisexual. And a lot of people were mad at the episode for the second reason, because they believe that they defined the difference between pan and bi badly. And this, this gets under my skin a bit because it's in the word. A lot of people want to mix pan and bi as if they're the same thing, but they're not the same thing. Bisexual, bi, it means two, two genders, into men and into women, as in men who were born men, women who were born women. So if you take me as an example, I am a bi woman, I am into women and I am into men, but I have not found myself attracted to trans people, for example, or people sort of in between that spectrum. Pan, pan is, pan is man, woman, trans man, trans woman, and every other thing that fits inside the, the plethora of identities and, and genders and whatnot. So if you're pan, you're into all of things, potentially. If you're bi, you're into men and women, specifically. So they're not the same thing. And the episode didn't get it wrong. They actually quote the dictionary definitions for both pan and bi at some point in the episode, which are, and I will just, for posterity, I will read them to you. And the, the thing is that I don't care about the labels. And when I say that, I'm not saying that I don't care about people's struggles or about the the importance of uh, discovering yourself and acceptance, social acceptance. I'm not saying that because all of that is massively important. But the game that we're playing now is the, the label game. Everybody needs to have every kind of label defining their personality. And I am just not a person who thinks that that's necessary. You are you first and foremost and everything else uh, just who cares who cares it's important to me that people are happy not that they can define themselves in a million different categories but if we are going to play the word game then at least use the correct words understand the words that are being used that's my gripe <laughs> if people insist on playing this you know word politics thing, then I would really like it if people understood the words that they were using. Okay, so pansexual, according to the Oxford Dictionary, is not limited in sexual choice with regards to biological sex, gender, or identity. And then if we do the same with bisexual, again, the Oxford Dictionary says, uh, bisexual, sexually attracted not exclusively to people of one particular gender, but attracted to both men and women. So yeah, there, there is a reasonably clear distinction between the two things. And like I say, I don't care who people are into. I am happy for anyone to be into anybody in any fashion that they want. It, it impacts nothing on my life at all. But if we insist on caring deeply about the labels and the definitions and the categories, then it would be good for people to understand the the actual words and the actual meanings. Anyway, there's a lot of things that happen in Big Mouth that I think are really positive. Something I've never seen before is the focus on like female orgasm and female pleasure and stuff, which is absolutely mind-blowing to me. I never saw anything like that when I was young. I never saw anything like that when I was a teen or even really in my early 20s. The, the acceptable talking out loud focus on women's right to enjoy their bodies, women's right to enjoy sexy time. Sexy time. And how confusing vaginas are. Just 
you know, I'm glad that somebody has spoken about that from a female perspective. There's a lot of talk about that from a male perspective, being confused by vaginas. But women are relatively confused by vaginas as well. It's really hard to figure some things out and not understand why they do what they do. And just, it, it's a confusing time being a woman, guys. Like, it's, it's hard. <laughs> But there's a lot of episodes that, like I say, focus on like female pleasure and female orgasm, which I think is really progressive and really healthy. And they also have episodes that focus on the difficulty that, that boys and girls, when they're teens, when they're young, have understanding each other, understanding what each other want and how to communicate with each other and the, the importance of autonomy, the importance of autonomy. There is a character in it who is mostly a very chill, very laid back character. Her name's Missy. She's kind of salt of the earth, peace and love type character. And because she's so gentle, people often push her around and she does eventually get to a breaking point where she's like, I am I don't belong to you. I am not your object. Just because, for example, we dated once doesn't mean you have any say over my life, which I also think is massively important. So I think it's sad that people have responded to this with distaste or uh, discomfort because I think that it's incredibly progressive and really important. I think the fact that it is a cartoon as well makes it accessible for young people at the same time. At a time and an age where these things are so important to learn and so important to understand. I am so glad that something is out there enough to say, you know what, we're <laughs> We're probably gonna get some hate for this, but we're gonna do it anyway because it's the right thing to do. And I think it is the right thing to do. I'm really glad that it exists. We binge watched season three in a day. <laughs> anyway guys, that's my, my rant about the sex positive cartoons. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please check out the links below for my Patreon and my Instagram and all of those things. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. And I will see you guys next time.